In this video, we're going to see voltage doubler. So the first question is, what is a voltage doubler? Let's say we are given a waveform whose peak value is Vm. We know there is a peak detector which will give us an output voltage of Vm. So that will be simply getting a Vm value at the output of the circuit. But here, when it says voltage doubler, the output of the circuit should be 2 Vm, which should be double the peak value of the input voltage. Here, the average value is 0. Now, having seen the peak detector and a clamper, what kind of operations can we do on this waveform so that we can get 2 Vm at the output? Obviously, the first thing is, let's add a DC voltage to this waveform, which means we want to clamp this. So, let's take this through a positive clamper so that the output voltage waveform will be like this where we have added a value of Vm so that the peak value for this waveform will be 2 Vm. Now, if we take it through a peak detector, in steady state, we will have 2 Vm as the output. Now, let's get the circuit together. The first one is, we need to have a positive clamper. We know how to get that. That is a capacitor here and a diode which should be pointing upwards. Now the voltage across the diode would be like this. Now following this we need to have a peak detector. We know how the circuit should be. That is having a diode here and a capacitor here. Now the voltage across the capacitor would be like this in steady state. So we can say this circuit is positive clamper followed by a peak detector. Hence the output voltage in steady state would be 2 Vm. And obviously if you look at this, the capacitor here will get charged to Vm and here the capacitor would get charged to 2 Vm. This is a voltage doubler circuit. We have seen one way of building a voltage doubler. Now we're going to see another way of building a voltage doubler just with peak detectors. So first let's look at the concept behind building a voltage doubler just with peak detectors. We have an input sinusoid wave whose peak value is Vm. If we take it through a positive peak detector, we know the capacitor would get charged to Vm, which means the output voltage here will be Vm. Now the same input, if we take it through a negative peak detector, the capacitor here is going to get charged to minus Vm with respect to our output reference. So V0 is going to be minus Vm. In the positive peak detector, V0 is going to be Vm. If you find a way to actually subtract the outputs of these two, then the output would be Vm minus of minus Vm which will be equal to 2 Vm, which means the input we are going to apply here, positive, negative, which will be Vi, and even here, positive, negative Vi. So we can, in fact, make both the negative terminals of both the circuits common and make a circuit. So this is how the circuit will be, where this is Vn. Here, we're going to have a negative, positive Vn. So let's connect the inputs in such a way that we have only one input. Now we're going to take the output across these two points, V0. In fact, instead of subtracting the minus value, we have added the value by flipping the capacitor. So in fact, the negative peak detector has been flipped here by making sure the input minus terminals are actually connected together. Now if you look at the working of the circuit, for the sinusoid input, where the time period is capital T, when the input voltage is positive, that is the positive half of the cycle, where D1 is going to be on and D2 is going to be off. Hence, we can take D1 is short circuit and D2 is open circuit. In that case, the diode D1 will allow current to flow through and let the capacitor C1 charge. If we remember that till T is equal to T by 4, the capacitor is going to get charged to a value of peak Vm. 
and beyond that point the voltage across the diode D1 will become negative because the input voltage will decrease below Vm hence the diode will be open circuit which will not allow current to flow through anymore hence the capacitor would get charged to plus Vm so let me indicate that here and for the next quarter cycle what happens is both D1 and D2 will be off now coming to the third quarter cycle that is between T by 2 to 3T by 4 here during which D1 will be off and D2 will be on which will be allowing the capacitor C2 to actually charge in this way which will make the voltage across the capacitor follow the input voltage which is negative in fact in this way but if you look at how it gets charged it will get charged positive on this side and negative on this side it keeps getting charged till the point of Vm here hence the capacitor voltage would become Vm now beyond which the input voltage at the N side of the diode D2 would become higher than the voltage at the P side of the diode D2 then the diode would become open circuit hence the current would stop flowing and the capacitor would get charged to that peak value Vm let me show that here that during this cycle we have D1 off and D2 on allowing C2 to get charged to Vm so let me indicate that the diode is conducting now coming to the fourth quadrant that is when both D1 and D2 will be off now when we measure the output across the points here V0 V0 is going to be 2 Vm in steady state which means after one full cycle in fact this is called a full wave voltage doubler and the first one we have seen is usually called a half wave voltage doubler in the next video we will look at voltage tripler voltage quadrupler and how to expand the circuit to have even higher voltage multiplications if you like the video please give a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed yet please do subscribe and thank you for watching